Hi and welcome to Project Build. I thought it might be interesting to look at some of these graphical multimeters that are on eBay, uh, Amazon and so on. They might purport in a way to be oscilloscopes, they're not really oscilloscopes. Uh, one of the major issues with them is that you can't move the, the signal vertically up and down. So for instance if you had a, a 12 volt signal, you're I stuck either using 3 volts per division so 3, 6, 9, 12, which brings it right next to the top of the screen or going up to uh, say the 30 volt um, sort of range or 10, 10 volts per division would be 40 volt range in which case it's very small. So you can't analyse very small uh, differences in voltage uh, at higher levels of voltage effectively. You can't shift it up and down. So it's not an oscilloscope. That's the first thing you need to be clear on. It is however a graphical multimeter. And what it allows you to do is everything that a multimeter would do, first of all. So if you're looking for a multimeter, they're not a bad choice. They're not, I mean, the quality isn't great. For instance, the banana plug in this is a bit looser on the, on the, uh, the positive. It's very tight on the, on the black, the negative. Uh, but, uh, you know, the quality isn't brilliant. You can, going for, uh, for instance, I have a UNI-T. Um, multimeter which is excellent, can't fault it, brilliant piece of kit. But I got this as well and it was to view things that were very fast, very short time scale, things that are changing, for instance sensors on vehicles nowadays. If you've got some sort of weird code coming up on a, on a van or a car or so on, uh, you can check this into the sensor and see the actual um, PWM signal coming out of the sensor, where if you just plugged in a normal multimeter you would only see a, a lower voltage than 12 because it's part on, part off. The average is a lower voltage. But with this, you're able to see the actual PWM signal. You're able to see even changes as you rev the engine and so on. So that information in itself is very useful. And particularly for PWM signals, these are brilliant because the signal goes from whatever voltage it is, say 5 volts or 12 volts or whatever, down to zero, back up, down to zero, back up. And so because you can't move the uh, vertical level in this, that works particularly well. Another example is when you're starting the vehicle, you, it's hard to tell sometimes how the voltage drop uh, goes because if you put a meter across, even if somebody else is starting it, multimeters generally only update every second or so, maybe half a second and a good one. Uh, so by the time it starts you might see it drop from 12 to say 10 but you don't know what the actual lowest value was. So with this for instance you can put it on a, a scale that it's running maybe over 5-10 seconds or something over, the, over the, the width of the screen. Stick this on, either start it yourself if you can clamp these on or, or uh, get somebody else to start it and that will give you a, a, a graphical view of the, the battery voltage. So it's an ideal scenario for that. It lets you see exactly how the, the voltage um, drops and how it comes up. Uh, and then you can check the min and max uh, voltages on it and see have you got a good battery, have you not? Sorry, great noise in the background. Another great useful tool uh, for diagnosing issues with vehicles is a pulse sensor, uh, which you can buy them at uh, differing levels of expense. But I'm not going to repeat this, if you look up on YouTube, uh, pulse sensor for vehicles, uh, DIY pulse sensor perhaps, and there's quite a few tutorials, but essentially it's a hose coming into, in this case, an old peanut butter tub, just hot glued it into the bottom, and you get a piezo sensor, piezo sensor goes onto a wee bit of foam, uh, just to, to um, take it away from any movement that's happening with the actual tub. The cables come out from that onto the top and you clip onto the two cables, reversed round so the, the black would go onto the red and the red would go onto the black because this, the, the red colour is designed to cause the piezo sensor to actually make a sound, uh, you're beeping your fire alarm for instance, but when you're actually moving the sensor is a reverse voltage that's coming so if you want to, to get uh, an increase in voltage going up the way you need to reverse the leads relative to the colours on your on your uh, multimeter. But uh, yeah, the piezo sensors, 30-40 pence, the piece of chips, I mean if you haven't got it around it's 
three pound a metre or something like that and the peanut butter is probably the most expensive of a lot uh, but you get to eat it so that's quite good so uh, yeah this sensor works brilliantly it, you stick it into the exhaust you can stick it uh, onto the dipstick for instance but uh, just starting with the exhaust if you stick it into the exhaust you get the, the pressure pulses as the engine exhausts and so you can see for example if there's a if there's a misfire in the engine you would see that there would be a dip in the in the pressure uh, every well for instance this fault lifts the three cylinders so say cylinder two had a fault you would see high exhaust pressure in cylinder one you then see a low pressure in cylinder two because it didn't fire and then a high pressure in cylinder three uh, and that pattern would repeat so it would be high low high high low high high low high it's obviously only um, um, in oscilloscope terms it's only got one channel so you can't connect that to for instance another channel that gives you an indication of what the what the actual uh, cylinder is that's causing the problem but you would at least have an indication that you had a cylinder that was not firing correctly and that then you can go to more detailed things perhaps use a proper oscilloscope and you can keep this in the van all the time uh, just for doing on the spot diagnosis uh, you can equally put this onto the, the oil pressure dipstick, uh, in this case I just held it on with my hand uh, and it doesn't give a huge signal but it does give a signal and if for example you had the, the piston rings were leaking a wee bit you might see a difference between the, 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 th the three signals so you might have just the normal one, you might see it a rise in pressure on the, se the second one if, the, if it was the, the, second, the second cylinder and then a normal one again and so we go normal high normal normal high normal for example and that could indicate you had piston ring wear you can equally attach this onto the top of the radiator cap uh, perhaps using the, the adapters that you get for a pressure testing kit uh, just push that onto it and start the engine and if you've got a head gasket failure that's leaking out to the coolant system then that will indicate by whenever the cylinder is pressurizing and it pressures out towards the coolant system, you'll see that rise in pressure uh, in the coolant system. And these are incredibly sensitive. They'll, they'll pick up these tiny adjustments in pressure and very accurately. So it wouldn't be a great diagnosis system in terms of what a garage might use. They'll want proper, like a picoscope or a hand tech or one of these sort of oscilloscopes. But for somebody that just wants to do a quick check because something's acting a bit strangely with the engine, they just want to check the sensor, uh, particularly with um, machines and so on, you might just want to, to do some quick checks to see that the engine's running well and it's, you know everything seems up to scratch. You're talking less than five pounds for a pulse sensor and you're talking sort of 60 pounds for, for one of these. You really can't beat it. It's the, uh, the cheapest way of, of getting diagnosis that you would never get just with a multimeter. If you want to go further on, yes, oscilloscope, multi-channel oscilloscope, all that sort of governs. Brilliant kit, but you know, for me, I don't personally need it. This gives me everything I need to, to know to go that little step beyond a multimeter, but give me a ton of extra information. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing one of these um, and you've got any questions, do drop me a message. There's a whole lot of different versions. This is the ET, sorry, ET828. Uh, there's a must-to um, version of this. There's another, uh, there's quite a few Chinese names, uh, brands. Uh, they, they're basically all the same. Uh, tool. This is the 1 megahertz version. I think there's a slightly older one, funnily enough, that's a 40 megahertz. I don't know if I really trust whether they're 1 megahertz or 40 megahertz. They're certainly fast enough to deal with most things on a vehicle. Uh, the only thing that uh, this wouldn't do is act perhaps as a time domain reflectometer, which would be if you, if you were trying to measure a breaking along cable, for example, you can send it, you can tap a, a battery through a resistor. Uh, cause a pulse down the line, back up the line, and you can see the, the, the pulse at the start and then the reflected pulse as it comes back. The time difference between the two uh, means that you've got uh, up the line and back, so you have that 
and then you can tell how many meters up the, the cable the, the fault is. This isn't quick enough to do that. You need to be down into the sort of 10 nanosecond range. So you need maybe 100 megahertz, uh, something like that, to really get a, a decent look at a signal like that. But uh, no, for, for vehicle stuff, there's not much that really happens that quickly. Uh, so, you know, that's, it's ideal for that sort of stuff. So, yeah, any questions, drop them in the comments. If you liked the video, please like and give me a subscribe. That would be great. Thanks very much for watching.